Unfortunately, everyone isn't gifted with supreme athleticism, nor does everyone have elite handles along with a silky smooth jumper. Many young basketball players think it's a necessity to have a 40-inch vertical or be extremely tall to even have a chance at getting a college basketball scholarship. And while size and skill obviously play a huge part, you could just as easily get a scholarship from your talents on the other end of the court with your defensive ability. Playing great defense is what earned former high school prospect Julian Lewis Division I offers from many different schools across the country. In fact, college coaches primarily came to watch his games just to scout his defensive ability. He wasn't a monster scorer nor was he averaging 40 points per game, just pure defensive talent. The first defensive tip that will increase your odds of getting a scholarship is hustle. Having great hustle and giving maximum effort is something that will impress coaches in any sport. Having great hustle is sprinting back in transition, sprinting to a shooter on closeouts, and diving on the floor for loose balls. If you were a college coach, which player would you want to recruit to your team? The player who doesn't hustle back in transition, or the player who does? That sounds like a pretty obvious answer to me. The second tip is to guard the opposing team's best player. In order to impress college coaches, you have to be able to effectively guard Division I or two high school prospects. So whenever you go up against a ranked player or team, stand out by forcing tough shots and getting multiple defensive stops. And yeah, I know your coach may not let you just decide on your own to guard the opposing team's best player, and most high school teams play zone, so it can be pretty difficult to be consistently matched up with a specific player. So make sure to play hard on that end of the floor no matter who you're guarding. And quick note it doesn't matter if a college scout is at the game to watch you or not. Even if they are there to watch the other team, you can still get their attention by putting these tips into action. The next tip is to improve your one-on-one -on -one defensive ability. If you want college scouts to notice your defensive talent, you have to be able to lock down skilled defensive players out on the perimeter. At the college level, there are elite scorers everywhere. So as a defender, you need to be able to slow them down and contain them. One way to be a great on-ball defender is to remain in a low defensive stance. Your goal is to have your shoulders lower than the person you are guarding. Staying in a low defensive stance makes you more explosive and quicker laterally. Another on-ball defensive tip is to have active hands. Having active hands is something all of the best defenders in the NBA have. Keeping your hands busy and moving can make it very difficult for the offensive player to get off a comfortable shot or make a pass. The traditional hand placement is to have one hand high in the air to block the passing lanes and one hand down low to poke the ball away or get a deflection. A few other on-ball defensive tips is to force your opponent to their weaker hand. If they are left-handed, force them right. If they are right-handed, force them left. Another tip is to maintain your position and stay grounded. Don't fall for pump fakes and be prepared for jab steps and other moves offensive players may use to throw you off balance. The fourth defensive tip that'll increase your chances of getting a scholarship is knowing your defensive assignments and responsibilities. There is nothing worse than a player being lost and confused on the defensive end. It shows coaches that you don't watch film or you simply aren't putting in the effort. Not only should you know your assignment, but you must also execute it. If you're playing at the top of a 2-3 zone, then your main responsibility should be to not let your opponents penetrate the middle and be able to communicate with your teammate in switching situations. Your goal is to be able to know everything about your defensive coverage. That's what makes defenders like Drew Holiday and Marcus Smart so elite. They know exactly what they're supposed to be doing as well as their teammates. Here's what not knowing your defensive assignments looks like, as well as giving poor effort. The fifth defensive tip is to understand that your lack of height doesn't automatically mean you can't ever be a great defender. And if you're on the taller side, then this may not apply to you. But if you are between 5'7 and 5'11, this is definitely for you. Being short obviously comes with its disadvantages. But there are elite defenders out there right now that are under 6 foot. Chris Paul stands at about 5'11, and yet he's one of the best defensive point guards in the NBA and not to mention he's third on the all-time steals leaderboard. Fred Van Vliet for the Toronto Raptors stands at 5'10", and he's an elite defensive point guard 
who has some of the best hands in the NBA. The sixth and final tip is leadership. And honestly, out of all the tips we've gone over, this might be the most important. I know from experience coaches love when players take on the leadership role on the defensive end. You can do this by building up your teammates' confidence. If they get scored on or miss a defensive assignment, tell them what they did wrong and get them ready for the next possession. Another way to be a leader is by leading by example. Playing hard and making hustle plays can really set the tone for the rest of your team. Hopefully these defensive tips gave you motivation and confidence to really focus on the defensive end and disclaimer. While you can get a basketball scholarship from your defensive ability, it's important to be well-rounded on both sides of the ball. Neither side is more important than the other so make sure to lock in on both. But that'll be all for today's video make sure to like the video and subscribe for more NBA defensive content.